today's recipe, we're making shepherd's pie. And not only that, I have a special for you. I have a special treat. I'm gonna be making another recipe. We're gonna take our shepherd's pie and make a burrito out of it. Now this was inspired by my son who tried both ways and he loved the burrito version. And he absolutely loves burritos pretty much of any kind. So he thought I should share it with you. So I'm Rockin' Robin and I'm gonna show you how to do it all right after our chef joke. I like to start off with a chef joke and we'll have another one a little bit later, so stay tuned. But here we go. What do you call a lamb that is covered in chocolate? A candy bar. <laughs> so we'll start off here by chopping up our veggies. We wanna cut our carrots nice and fine and along with our onions. And then with our jalapeno, we're gonna cut it in half and then cut it in half again. And then we're gonna remove the membrane and the seeds. Then we'll slice it into strips and then chop it up nice and fine. We're gonna do the, basically the same thing with the celery. Now with the herbs, I'm using fresh rosemary here from my garden. So we peel off the leaves uh, as best as we can, and then we'll chop it up real fine. Here I have some organic thyme that I got from the store, and we'll just take the leaves and try to peel them off. The stems are pretty soft, and it's okay if you include them. Uh, then we'll just chop that up real fine as well. So we're gonna start off our recipe right here at the stove. I've got a cast iron pan here over medium heat. I've got a pot back here with some water in it. I'm gonna put a little salt in there and bring that to a boil. That's where we're gonna boil our potatoes. And we kinda wanna time it so that what's cooking in the pot here in the cast iron is ready at the same time as when the potatoes are done. So I have some ground lamb here. When you use ground lamb, it's called shepherd's pie. If you were to use beef, which you could do, then you call it cottage pie. Now I'm gonna start off by placing a little bit of olive oil in the pan so that the lamb doesn't stick. And we're gonna place the, the lamb in the pan and you wanna break it up. I like to use a couple of spatulas. Add a little bit of salt. And a little bit of pepper. And we're gonna cook that until it's no longer pink. All right, the lamb looks done. I've broken the pieces down. I want them pretty small like they are. And now I'm gonna drain a little bit of the excess grease out. Okay, I didn't drain all the grease out because I do want a little bit. Now we're gonna add the onions to this. And in goes our jalapenos. And then we're gonna saute this for about five minutes. And that's over medium heat. And you can get all the written instructions on how to do this below the video in the description area. Click down there where it says show more. So while the lamb is sauteing for about you know five more minutes, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna prepare our potatoes. Now I'm using russet potatoes in this. You could use gold or you know whatever you have really. I peel them, I use organic because uh, you know they're just full of pesticides if they're not. And uh, you wanna peel them and then cut them in half lengthwise then cut them in half again, and then I'll just cut into nice little chunks, and that's all you have to do. So I'm gonna place the potatoes in my boiling water at this point. And we're gonna bring that back to a boil and let them cook until they're fork tender. All right, here's our lamb mixture after, you know, a good five minutes or so. And what I'm gonna do is make a little hole in the middle and I'm gonna add the garlic. I've got some minced garlic here, a fair amount of it, because I think it really makes for great flavor. And I wanna smash, I wanna get it right on the heat so that it can kind of mellow it out a bit. And I have some tomato paste. So I'm gonna smash that right in the bottom of the pan as well with it. And I'm just gonna let this cook just for like a minute or so, and then we're gonna mix it all in. The tomato paste will caramelize as well and kind of get a nice flavor to it. That's why it's right on the pan. We don't want to burn that garlic, so make sure your temperature is on medium low. All right, so now I'm just gonna stir it all in with, the, with all the mixtures. Just work that in. I can smell the garlic, it smells amazing. Garlic always smells good, doesn't it? 
I've got my celery. I've got just one rib of celery here that I'm going to add. And next goes our thyme and fresh rosemary. Okay, I'm going to kind of work that in a little bit. So I'm cooking this for about two minutes. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of red wine and some Worcestershire sauce. I'm going to let that cook in for a couple of minutes at least. All right, it's been a couple minutes. Now it's time we're going to add some carrots to this. While things are going, you want to check your potatoes. I have this nice big ladle type uh, straining spoon that works great. Poke your potato. You don't want any resistance. That's when you know it's done. I got a little bit of resistance. I'd say one more minute and those will be ready. I have some cold chicken broth here. You could use beef broth if you want. Uh, and I also have some arrowroot, which I'm going to add to it. And that's going to create a little sauce that we're going to thicken this up with. You can use cornstarch if you want. You can use flour if you want. So we'll just mix that in. And then we're going to pour it into the lamb mixture. And this will simmer for just a few minutes. It's time to take our potatoes off and drain those. So I'm going to do that now. Now here's our lamb. It's just simmering away. It's thickening up, looking good. All right, let's check on this. You want to take your fork and test your carrots. This is why you want to make sure that your carrots are relatively small so that they cook up quick. At this point, we're ready to add, I have some frozen peas. And I'm going to toss those in, give them a nice stir until they, they get in there, and they defrost very quickly. I'm also going to add just a touch of salt because I haven't added any other salt in that very beginning, so I want to make sure this has enough salt in it. And then we're going to let this sit on a low simmer until we get our potatoes all done and we're ready to put the whole thing together. Our lamb mixture is done. It's sitting over there on the stove, keeping warm. Let's work on the potatoes. Now I have one of these rice little contraptions, ricer things. You put your potatoes in, you smash it down. It comes out already practically mashed. But if you have one, you know, use it. If you don't, don't worry about it. A good old handy dandy masher does the trick. So if you haven't seen one of these ricer things, I'll show you how it works. Fill up your little compartment there and then just it squeezes out. Check that out. And it comes out nice and fluffy, but you still have to mix it. So I have it, so I'm using it. So to our mashed potatoes, I'm going to add some cheddar cheese. And I like to just start mixing it in to, so that the heat from the potatoes will start to melt the cheese. And then I have a mixture here of milk, whole milk. I'm using whole milk because it's just richer and creamier. And some butter. And I'm going to add some of that in there. And like I said, ideally you want to add the cheese when the potatoes, you know, first come off. They're nice and hot. They'll melt the cheese for you and it'll mix in really well. Now, of course, potatoes need salt, right? So we want to make sure we get some salt in there. I also like to add a little bit of Gruyere. It has a nice nutty flavor to it, and it just really, really tastes great. So I just grate some in. I don't really measure it. I just, you know, just add some. I'm also going to add just a bit of pepper to this. You can use white pepper or black pepper. If you don't want to see the specks, use white. Now this is ready to go on top. Now we're ready to load up our baking dish. I have an eight by eight here. This is a, you know, like a Pyrex type dish. And I'm just going to place the lamb mixture in the bottom. Got my oven preheated to 400. It's going to cook in there for about 20 minutes. And then we're going to put it on broil and we're going to brown up the top and make it look really cool. And now we'll add the potatoes. You want to push everything to the corners, cover everything. At this point, I'm going to take a fork and make some ridges. That way they will 
brown up in the oven and you'll see some nice contrast, all right? So just, you just make some ridges like this. We're gonna add some more Gruyere cheese to the top and Parmesan. So in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, this goes for about 20 minutes. I think it must be time for chef joke number two. All right, so what do you get when you cross a boa and a sheep? A wraparound sweater. So here's the shepherd's pie after 20 minutes. Now we'll turn it to broil and cook it until it's a golden brown. Keep an eye on it because it can burn easily. Our shepherd's pie is done. It was in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 minutes, and then I turned that off onto broil, and we broiled it for about five minutes, and you gotta keep a close eye on it, and you get these nice, beautiful, browned ridges. It just looks fantastic, right? And so now it's sitting here, and I'm letting it cool a bit so that I can serve it up and do your special recipe, which is the shepherd's pie burrito. So to make a nice burrito, you're gonna wanna get a large flour tortilla, and I like to heat them up. You always want to heat up your tortillas when you make burritos. That way, they don't break on you. If you don't, if you try and use them cold out of the fridge, they're going to tear and break, and it's not fun. So warm it up. I place mine into my tortilla warmer. I place it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Comes out nice and soft and tender and warm. And then all we have to do is place some of our shepherd's pie into the burrito. I like to make sure that I get a little bit of everything throughout the whole burrito. So I'm gonna make sure that there's mashed potatoes down the whole line and the filling as well. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of some more cheese. I'm gonna add some more cheddar cheese to that just because, mostly because my son likes it that way. Then we're gonna fold it up. Both ends are gonna get tucked in. And then I'm gonna take it over to the stove. We're gonna heat up a frying pan over, well, we'll start out at medium heat, put a little butter in the bottom, place our, our burrito in there seam side down and let it brown up. Once that one side gets nice and toasty and nice and browned, I'm gonna carefully flip it over into the other side. And then once that second side is done, that's it. Serve it up. This is an absolutely delicious burrito. Hey, if you're looking for a corned beef and cabbage recipe, I've got one here for you to try. You'll love it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment. We'll see you next week.